Uh, it's been been real good. Uh, the biggest thing about me is uh, this year, I feel like I'm, I'm way more comfortable in the scheme, and now I can just let my athleticism just uh, fly around, and just do what I do without really thinking. And uh, that's the biggest thing that I feel like I've improved this from last year. It's like I didn't. I feel like I haven't had no setbacks compared to last year. Like I'm continuing where I left off at, and that's my uh, that's the biggest thing. I love and I love that I'm I'm doing that. We talked about your development, how much time you'd have to put in the books. Has that paid off? Do you see that now? Oh yes, because like my biggest thing now is like I know, like I know what uh, I know my playbook like the back of my hand now. That's the biggest thing. And like they say, different formations now. I know what the uh, like if it's formation change, I know what it changed to. So I'm already I'm already thinking ahead. Like if like if it's a motion, I'm already thinking about, like the next thing I have to do. So like that's a, I feel like it has paid off. And the one thing I, I'm trying to continue to do is still doing things, still doing them extra meetings with coach, still studying uh, uh, at the house, doing them extra things, so I won't just fall behind. Because uh, my biggest thing, I know I'm still I'm still like learning the game, I'm still learning more. And more and I'm just uh, just trying to get to the point that I like I, I'm just like I don't have to think at all and I just let my my athleticism take over. Nick Rallis talked about those like early morning meetings you guys have had since he got here. How beneficial have those been? And you know, can you do you have any funny memories from them or anything like that? Um, uh, uh, it's, they've been great. Uh, funny memories. I really can't think of no funny memories at the time. The biggest thing is just uh, we just try to watch extra uh, extra reps like uh, uh like you watch practice and then like the plays I probably did mess up on. I'll just go through different plays and different concepts uh, up in that play and just making sure I'm th always thinking of different. different different scenarios and different things that just always keep me thinking like if it, and now I get to the point that he's ask, asking me advanced questions it's not all it's not all about the simple things he's just asking me uh about like what what to expect or like what, what run may, this may be coming I just really just learning the offensive scheme and that's the biggest thing I feel like I'm uh jumping to this year so what's, what's the game that you played I believe was the Broncos game right mm -hmm. you two forced fumbles you got hurt the next week mm -hmm. how difficult was that when you started like uh, it was very difficult, like, I, cause I knew I, I knew how uh, I was becoming better and better each game. I knew everything was starting to slow down for me. But it also, I learned, I learned from the injury. It also, like, it forced me to just get back in my books. So I know I couldn't do anything physically. I couldn't be on the field. So now I just had to make sure I was just stayed in meetings. Just like, if it was nothing but at the house, it's online. Just listening to the coaches, making sure that I didn't forget about the playbook. Because the biggest thing was when I came back to OTAs, I wanted to just hit the ground running. I didn't want to have any setbacks or anything. So I didn't want to just like uh, come back and left, uh, leave from my, what I left off at. And I felt like I did it coming to OTAs and now coming to camp. When the injury happened, David. Say it again. What was the specific injury that you had? It was an MCL tear. Okay. Yeah. And did you expect when it happened that it was going to be season ending? Uh, I didn't expect to be seeing see the injury. To be honest, when I got when I had the injury, uh, I really thought it was going to be like a couple weeks. But uh, when I got the, uh, the the scan and everything, I realized it was a, com a complete tear off the bone, and I knew I had to have surgery. So it kind of like it was a uh, it was a big like it hurted me uh, like to like to learn know about that. But I knew like I said I, I didn't want to get it going to depression or anything. I just wanted to just keep on learning. I just wanted to learn from the injury. Like I said, I just wanted to I knew I couldn't do anything physically, so I just m m made it more mentally and just mentally focused on uh, my playbook and just and just continue to learn uh, everything. So what was sort of your motivation throughout? the rehab process? Uh, just knowing that I was going to come back next year and just uh, just continue to just leave where I left off because uh, I was just saying, just knowing that I, how good I was becoming, just it, it was just motivation by, by itself. I saw the game starting to slow down. I started just uh, making plays and just started to see that. So that was my motivation by itself because like knowing that I could just continue to come back and do the same thing. Have you noticed anything about the physicality of practice with the Guardian helmets? Anything different? Uh, me personally, I, I really, I really don't uh, haven't seen a difference uh, or anything. But I know uh, I really, I realize it's a little bit heavier. So I feel like once it come off, it probably be a little bit easier to run around. A little bit, uh, probably a little bit. You can probably be a little bit more physical and everything. But uh, I feel like I really haven't like really had a big thud, thud to really know that uh, if it's like a true protection yet. What's your impression of it? Oh, I love uh, like all the teammates. They, I love all the rookies coming in, like then knowing all the uh, the different guys come from different teams. We all just coming together. We all learning about each other, and uh, just the linebacker room by itself. Uh, like Co uh, uh, Kobe Dean, I've like, been from Mississippi. Me and him has uh, like related to each other. We have like we talk. We've uh, become close, and then we're coming. Kazir White, he brought some leadership to the room. Uh, but him been with his experience and everything. So a lot of the players they're bringing leadership. We have more leaders coming in that have played uh, a couple years that are bringing more leadership from the teams they had and bringing more knowledge to, uh, to our team. What's your impression of Kobe so far through camp? Oh, he, he's a great guy. Like once he's starting to learn, he's starting to click and, that, and click and everything. And one thing I like about this linebacker group, like yes, we're competing for a spot. We all, but we all for each other. We all trying to see each other do good. So like uh, uh, every day, you just see him getting better and better. Like the more he learns, he's getting more comfortable, and he's just starting to make more plays. And uh, I'm really excited to see him play. That uh, that Mississippi connection. Did you guys know each other at all, or about each other in high school? And you know, what do you guys talk about? What, what's the difference between where you guys grew up in Mississippi? Um, well, one thing I, I did when he came out, I did know like he was like one of the top linebackers coming out. Right. So I. Did 
didn't hear about them, but I was already in college. And like big, biggest thing we talk about now, because it's, it's a difference between North Mississippi and South Mississippi. Okay. North Mississippi is all, it's a little bit hotter than Delta. So like, because I just because going to Cahoma Community College, going to Clarksdale, Mississippi, I realized that it's the temperature up there is so different and everything. We talk about that. We talk about the people and everything. Most, but people in Mississippi really kind of alike. So like we all country, we all uh, relate to each other. But uh, the biggest thing is just I feel like the temperature. The temperature up north compared to South Mississippi is totally different. But it's still humid and it's still hot. Alright guys, thank you. Thank you. Feels good man. It's a blessing to be out here. Uh, love the game, man. Love love the process, love the little things. You know, just fighting this year to be, you know, consistent, you know, and just be an example. You know what I mean? Because I've been able to go through a lot, a lot of wisdom. Uh, a lot of guys have been able to teach me a lot over the years. So stepping into, you know, the role that I'm in now, it's been it's been kind of cool to just, you know, be able to be there to help guys out and just, you know, give my experience. You know? as, a, as a team in an offense last year, you guys made a pretty sharp turn like midway through the season to really running the ball more and, and running it really effectively. What was that like for the group of running backs? Were you guys at that point kind of saying, hey, look, like we can bear the burden, you know, this is great, that kind of thing? Like, kind of put put us in your headspace of when that change was made, what it was like for you guys. I mean, I think we were all on one, of, we were all on one accord with it all, man, because, uh, you know, we know we know the capability we have at the offensive line position, and you know them guys, them guys, shoot, they want it on their back. You know what I mean? They, that's the type of confidence. That's the type of not to the point of arrogance or you know being selfish or anything like that. But those guys truly believe that you know they can make some stuff happen, and I feel like the whole team fed off of that. Mm -hmm. So you know, yeah, we were running the ball, but you know everybody was involved from the linemen to the receivers. That's I mean, as a team, that's the only way the run game goes. There's so much accent and emphasis in the passing game. And the modern NFL. How hard is it to be a running back nowadays? I mean, I think it's really similar to life, man. You just got to adapt to what life gives you, man. You know, it's not all about, you know, you got to be able to adapt and adjust. You know what I'm saying? And, and uh, like you said, nowadays, you know, you want to air it out or whatever. You have to be able to uh, be versatile. You have to be able to do different things. You have to be able to catch the ball. You have to be able to win one-on-ones, you know, in the passing game. So, you know, just got to be able to adapt. There's a lot of, it looked like you were having, uh, you know, some, some you know, positive uh, runs out here with you. It's good to get the pads on and you really aggressive out there. Today. Yeah, I mean, I love, I love putting the pads on, man. I love, you know, because the run game, you're not really able to get a realistic look unless you have the pads on to really get guys moving around and, you know, feeling it from the safeties coming down and getting a chance to make them move on them. So I love them when we put the pads on. What are you thinking about the new linebacking? Man, I really like them, man. I really like them. Like, we got some good work in today in the one-on-ones, man. We've been sharpening each other. You know, I'm excited to see, you know, obviously we've had some additions in the offseason, but, I mean, the guys that we've always had around, too, you know, they're all great players. So I'm excited to see them see them do their thing. A lot of guys have talked about, you know, a lot of people on the outside have talked about the need for, like, a short yardage back, you know, somebody in red zone or, you know, third and short situations. Is that an area that you feel, you know, you sometimes get overlooked in just because you might be a little bit shorter, even though, like, obviously – Bigger guy. Uh, I'm not really concerned about outside opinions. All I'm worried about is what my teammates think, my coaches think, and what the front office thinks. So outside of that, we're going to game plan, we're going to put the, the right person in the right situation, and we're going to ball. What's one of the things that Jamal Singleton has really harped on this year as he opposed, opposed to last year? What has he really seen you guys improve on as a group? He's talked about, you know, doing the fundamentals aggressively, you know what I'm saying? Correct fund fundamentals under pressure aggressively with high intensity. So, you know, we were able to have some success last year uh, midway through the season, but let's continue to be, you know, complete backs, all of us. Doesn't matter who's in the game. Um, you know, you got to be able to be versatile and resort to your fundamentals under pressure. That's what makes good teams great. What, what is it about you as a player and a person that has let you stick in this league as long as you have? You're already well past the threshold of the average guy who stays and plays in the NFL. What is it about you that's made you stick? You know, I, I was a I was a walk on at Louisiana Tech, man, and you know, even even before that, man, like shoot, seventh grade, I started off on the defensive offensive line, man. But you know, and they, I was overlooked. The one thing I learned about myself is that you know, hungry. You know what I'm saying? Like when I put my mind to something, that's I want to do my best to try and achieve it. 
by any means necessary. So whether somebody's watching, somebody's not watching, it don't matter to me. Like it don't matter what labels are, you know, put on me or what people have to say. I learned from a very young age that you know I'm, I'm competing against myself every single day. You know, and, and no year have I ever felt like, oh, I've arrived, or I've done this, or I've done that. You know, I always feel like there's something I can work on. I feel like there's always something better that I can achieve, something better I can do. So each year for me is like a new year. So that's that's the way I approach it. You know, I had to learn that early, and so I feel like it's kind of helped me. You know, throughout my career in the NFL. I was I was all right, man. I could I couldn't go through you. I could go around you, in between your legs, whatever, dog. I, you know what I'm saying? I, I had I did my best to get back there. Yeah. You yeah. never forget those flights from way back. Nah, nah. Everything. I mean, I, I'm I'm done. You know, I don't really believe in coincidences anymore. I feel like God has a purpose. You know, for my life and everything that I've gone through up to this point. You know, it's been instrumental in my in my football career, and I know it's gonna help me out in life. Just right. yesterday, it feel, it feel like you were the practice squad and now you're the veteran in the room. Yeah, it's crazy. Like I said, it's, it's a different a different role to step into, but, you know, I'm just doing the best that I can. To, I don't feel like I'm any better than anybody else. You know what I'm saying? We all learning, but I just want to offer my, you know, what I've learned over these years and hope that, you know, somebody might listen.